This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Associated Equipment Distributors. Guten Tag, ich bin Kim Schmidt und ich bin auf Agrotechnica in Hanover, Deutschland. Willkommen bei On the Record. Hello, I'm Executive Editor Kim Schmidt. I'm at Agritechnica in Hanover, Germany. Now over to Ben in the studio with the latest on what's impacting the ag equipment industry. Selectrac, a manufacturer of electric tractors based out of Santa Rosa, California, has been declared as assets held for sale by its parent company, Ideonomics. A global electric vehicle company, Ideonomics said in its second quarter earnings filed August 4th, that four of its subsidiaries, including Selectrac, had met the criteria to be classified as assets held for sale. Ideonomics acquired a 15% stake in Selectrac in October 2020 and 100% ownership in June 2021, spending a total of $25 million to acquire Selectrac. Selectrac was founded in 2012 and sells three models of electric tractors ranging from 25 to 75 horsepower. Selectrac Vice President of Sales and Marketing John Groom said the company is looking for an investor with ag or electric vehicle experience and aims to have the transaction closed by the end of the year. Groom said at this point the company won't rule out any proposals. Uh, I think it will mean a lot more stability. Uh, I think it will mean a lot more uh, capabilities of getting uh, our new products to market faster to help our dealers grow faster uh, and increase sales. So. Um, I think it will also help us in the way that uh, we market and uh, our go-to strategy, uh, go-to-market strategy. Uh, we can expedite that and speed that up a little bit. Grimm said Selectrac currently has over 100 stores in its dealer network, but is still looking for more dealers. He added, however, that they're being more selective and looking for dealers who understand their go-to-market strategy is different than it would be for a diesel product. Grimm said the company always knew there would be challenges with the acceptance of electric tractors in the ag equipment market, but that there are still plenty of customers. He said it's possible electric tractors could make up 15% of the under 100 horsepower tractor market in five years. It's kind of like there was with tier four emissions. You know, it's just something that the government mandated and, and once everybody got behind it and it became a non-issue. Uh, I still think there's plenty of of people that are seeking regenerative energy and, and a green alternative out there that's going to carry us through. Uh, while you know, I do think the diesel market is going to continue to shrink. Ideonomics reported total revenue for Selectrac in 2022 was almost $11 million, up from $1.8 million in 2021. However, net loss for 2022 was $15.2 million, also up from a net loss of $1.9 million in 2021. IDNomics has not reported Selectrac's revenue thus far for 2023. IDNomics said in its second quarter filing that its Selectrac business is in the development stage, is not profitable, and is not expected to be profitable and cash generative in the short to medium term. This week's dealers on the move include Northland Lawn, Sport and Equipment, P&K Midwest, and Hanan Equipment. Northland Lawn Sport and Equipment, a six-store dealership in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, has acquired Minnesota dealer Moose Lake Implement and Sport. John Deere dealer P&K Midwest announced it will be opening a new megastore location to better serve its DeWitt and Makakaida customers. It is scheduled to open in early 2024. 11-store Deere dealer Hanan Equipment announced it is selling its eight stores in Wyoming, Utah, and Idaho to RDO Equipment and its three Colorado stores to Four Rivers Equipment. The deal is expected to close on December 11th, 2023. Now here's Noah Newman with the latest from the technology corner. Thank you very much, Ben. How farmers are teaching old tractors to think for themselves. That's the title of a recent Wall Street Journal article covering how more OEMs are expanding their presence in the retrofit market. I actually saw an example of this at the Farm Progress Show from John Deere. The retrofit first approach, the company debuted its new Sea and Spray Premium Package, which can be added to any sprayer model year 2018 or newer, as opposed to Sea and Spray Ultimate that can only be purchased from the factory. So in their eyes, they say the retrofit option is easier, faster, and most importantly, will drive more technology to the farm. If you're looking at you just got a two-year-old sprayer or a four-year-old sprayer, 2019, whatever the case might be, and you're not ready to upgrade to a brand new one, or you just got 
um, that sprayer and you want to get the latest and greatest technology, you can do that with Scene Spray Premium. You don't have to go buy a whole new sprayer. You can get that as a precision upgrade on your sprayer today. So if you're looking to get a little incremental value on your sprayer and take advantage of this technology, what we're trying to do is not make you fully commit to a totally different sprayer. You can get that, order it, get it um, installed on your sprayer today and get this awesome technology that we're talking about where you can go in the field, spray just weeds and cut down your, your costs and look at better yields. And farm equipment editor Mike Lesser actually wrote about this topic in his most recent blog post titled Precision Ag's Multi-Front Blitz. It's very interesting. I recommend you check it out at precisionfarmingdealer.com or farmequipment.com. In Technology Corner, I'm Noah Newman. Back to you, Ben. Great Plains Manufacturing and Montag Manufacturing announced a new dry fertilizer tank partnership last week during Agritechnica. A project that was born out of a meeting at a Pass Farm Progress show, Tom Bryan, president of Great Plains International, said the two companies realized they could work together with some of their technologies. He says that while liquid fertilizer is dominant in the U.S., about 80% of fertilizer around the world is dry. By working with Montag, now Great Plains can offer a dry fertilizer solution behind a Great Plains planter. Here's Brian with more details on the partnership. This partnership is a global partnership. It's Great Plains products working with Montag in the development of the technology. Uh, it's not limited to any particular country. It is North America, South America, uh, Northern Hemisphere, uh, Southern Hemisphere. It's a global type of partnership. And this is just the first step because on our drawing board, through our, our uh, discussions together, we this is one of uh, four or five projects that we have mapped out to develop and introduce over the next few years. While the product was introduced in Europe, Brian says it will be available worldwide. According to a November 15th report from Farm Credit Canada by senior economist Lay Anderson, Ag Implements is one of two equipment categories forecast for sales growth in Canada in 2024. Implement sales are forecast to be up 28.1% in 2023 and 8.4% in 2024, which would be the highest increases among all equipment categories for those respective years. Four-wheel drive tractor sales were the only other category forecast to see improved sales in both 2023 and 2024. Regarding implement sales, Anderson said in the report that, quote, Canadian implement manufacturing dollar sales are expected to finish higher in 2023 due to price inflation on raw materials used in manufacturing. Both four-wheel drive tractors and implement manufacturers, e.g. air drills, face delivery issues and low inventory levels throughout 2023, which are driving part of the increase in our 2024 projections. The report also said used air drill sales continue to be strong, rising 26% in 2023 due to reduced inventories of new manufactured units and subsequent trades over the previous few years. Over 100 horsepower tractor sales are forecast to decline 15.4% in 2024, the largest drop by category for that year. For 2023, Farm Credit Canada forecast under 40 horsepower tractor sales would see the largest decline, down 16.2%. John Deere reported its earnings for the full year 2023 on November 22nd. Deere reported $61.3 billion in total revenue for its fiscal year 2023, up 16% year over year. In its production and precision agricultural division, total revenue for the year was $26.8 billion, a 22% year over year increase. Total revenue in Deere's fourth quarter was down 1% to $15.4 billion. Production and precision ag revenue in the fourth quarter was also down 6% to $7 billion. John Deere reported its North American dealer's combine inventories as a percent of trailing 12-month sales dropped to 4% as of October 31st versus 6% at this point last year. For two-wheel drive tractors with 100 or more PTO horsepower, Deere dealer's inventories were 23% of trailing 12-month sales, up from 18% one year ago. This week's data point is brought to you by the 2024 Ag Equipment Intelligence Executive Briefing. According to the Fall 2023 Agricultural Lender Survey results from the American Bankers Association and the Federal Agricultural Mortgage Corporation, lenders reported that, on average, 28% of borrowers inquired about financing crop rotation over the past 12 months, and nearly one in five asked about financing livestock grazing. Borrowers also expressed interest in financing reduced till farming, precision farming technology, cover cropping, and automation technology. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to bthorpe at lesspub.com. For On the Record, I'm Ben Thorpe.
Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. And don't forget, the Ag Equipment Intelligence 2024 Executive Briefing will be held on December 7th and 8th. Register by November 27th to take advantage of our Black Friday discount and save 25% off your registration when you use promo code OTR25.